Hi, and welcome to part five of an introduction to Avaya Breeze. My name is Andrew Prokop, and I work at Aerosystems Integration as a communications consultant and technology evangelist. In part four of this series, I introduce you to call interception. I created a simple snap-in that registered itself against a telephone number. Every time someone called 2304, the snap-in would intercept the call, play an announcement, and then allow the call to ring through. In this video, I'm going to continue with call intercept while I explore other forms of breeze communications. However, rather than writing a snap-in from scratch, I'm going to start with a fully written snap-in and dig into the different components. This will allow me to present several of the more complicated breeze tasks in a timely manner. For the next few videos, I will be working with a snap-in that allows a caller to retrieve the current weather for any zip code. The concepts exercised include RESTful Web Services, Context Store, speech recognition, SMS text, variables, data assignment, and many of the tasks explored in previous videos. These concepts are too big for a single video, so I will break the discussion into smaller pieces. Today I will start with the RESTful Web Services portion since that is at the heart of my weather report application. However, before I get into the workflow, let's hear the snap in an action. To do so, I'm going to bring up my 1x communicator and I'm going to dial in to the snap-in, which is still at 2304. Welcome to the fabulous Barrow Systems Integration Weather Application. Please enter your five-digit zip code. Here is the weather for Scottsdale. The current temperature is 84.54 degrees. The current humidity is 89. Wind speed is 2.3 miles per hour and the weather outlook is scattered clouds. Would you like a text message with the weather information? Please say text or press 1. Please say done or press 2. Text. I heard text. Please enter your 10 digit cell phone number. Your text message has been sent. Goodbye. And that was it. So I dial in, I enter in my zip code, my snap-in reaches out, obtains the weather information, speaks it for me, then asks if I would like a text message. I said yes, and the text message is sent to my cell phone. To retrieve the weather information, I use a cloud-based service from Open Weather Map. Open Weather Map offers a RESTful interface that accepts a zip code and returns a detailed weather report for that area. The weather report comes back in JSON format, JavaScript object notation, and my snap and parses that information to create a runtime object. Let's start by looking at the weather data. I began my design by simply invoking the web service from a web browser, and this is what it returned. Notice information such as description and temperature minimum and maximum. By default, the temperature is expressed in Kelvin. In my application, I request the data in Fahrenheit. This is the workflow for my weather report snapping. After examining the JSON, I created a breeze variable that matched the return data. I chose to map values with decimal points to numbers and everything else as strings. In retrospect, I should have probably used numbers for all non-alphabetic values. I eventually need to convert them to string for human output, but as you will see, that is a trivial task. Let's go and take a look at the actual weather report object. So this object that I created matches the JSON that is returned by the web service. It's time to take a look at the call rest service task. The REST URI is where everything begins. So I determine what the URI is to invoke this service. I find this on the app, on the developers page of the Open Weather Map um, service. It tells me that I need to pass as variables things like zip code, country code, an application ID, and units. I use those to then build the input schema. So I would press retrieve, 
and if I do show, this is what it builds for the input schema to this particular task. The variables are filled in by two different sources. One of them will be properties. So we'll take the properties, values that I set for units, country code, and application ID. These are things that will not change from invocation to invocation. Play and collect will take its digits and it will store them in a variable, a string variable called zip code. Coming back to the REST services um, task. And then with inside of input mapping is where I will then map the values from properties and then the value from my variables, which would be my zip code. So zip code, my units, my country code, and my application ID get mapped into the input schema. So that will then go into the URI that is sent to the cloud service. So next, I, knew I need to look at the output mapping for my RESTful Web Services task. The RESTful Web Service returns three values, response code, response payload, and response payload type. Response payload contains the weather information. I map that to the variable weather output. I showed you that earlier. Because I created my variable object to match the JSON returned by the web service, I can use a built-in JSON parsing tool to actually populate the object. So json.parse of the response payload from the RESTful web service output schema. We'll then take the information that gets returned, which is JSON format from the RESTful web service, and then populate the object that matches that JSON. Let's close this out. Next, I use an assign task to extract the information I want to play to the caller. So the RESTful web service gave me a lot of information, but I want to play only parts of that information to the caller. So that I, I do that in the output mapping. I created a string that I called spoken weather. This is in the variable section to hold the information. I then use an expression and various text values to take the information that comes that's from the uh, within the object to the spoken weather task. So if I open up that, I see the actual expression that I built inside. Some of it is basic text. Here is the weather for and then I start to pull out information from the object, such as the name. I say the current temperature is, and I pull that out. I remember I said I brought that back as a number, so I convert it to string. I add the word degrees, the current humidity is, same process, humidity to string, the wind speed, and on and on and on until I actually have the string that I can play to the caller. Lastly, I need to speak the weather to the caller. This is accomplished with a play announcement task. And inside of play announcement, inside of input mapping, I map the spoken weather variable to the media URI slash text value. These are the words that the caller will hear. So looking back, this flow, I collect the information of the zip code information. I call the web service retrieve the data, parse the data, and then build the string I want to speak to the caller, and then speak it. It's that simple. It's important to realize that every web service will be unique, but for the most part, they will follow a very similar process. This is especially true with services based on JSON. It gets harder with XML services. There are no built-in XML parsers inside of Engagement Designer. You would need to write one yourself. The ability to call a web service from within sight of resnapping is an extremely powerful concept. 
Imagine the possibilities when you can reach out to cloud services from within communication workflows. In a future video, I will do just the opposite and show you how to create a workflow that is invoked by a cloud service. With that, I will wrap up this video. I invite you to subscribe to the Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel for future installments on this series. I promise you a lot more fun and games. Bye for now.